in this lesson, we're going to learn how to calculate the percentage of any nucleotide in a DNA molecule given the percentages of, of one of the others. So, for example, if we were given the percentage of adenine, we'd be able to figure out the percentage of thymine, which would then allow us to figure out the percentage of guanine, and then figure out the percentage of cytosine. So we can do all of that as long as we have one of the values. Now, let's just take a little refresher course on the structure of DNA molecule. Uh, this DNA molecule is made up of four nucleotides. Here is a phosphate, here is a sugar, here is a base. That makes up one nucleotide, and that nucleotide is thymine represented by the letter T. We have another nucleotide here, a phosphate, a sugar, and a base, and this one is guanine, represented by the letter G in the DNA molecule. And then we have over here, this one we've got a phosphate, a sugar, and a base, and this is adenine represented by A. And then lastly, we've got down here a cytosine with a phosphate, a sugar, and a base represented by letter C. And we're very familiar with this DNA model we came up with by Watson and Crick using the photograph by Ross and Franklin. And we see that A always goes T, A with T, and G always goes with C. Now, this familiar structure of, of the DNA model uh, probably would never have been come up with without the work of a guy named Erwin Shargaff. What Erwin Shargaff was able to do is he analyzed the percentage of each nucleotide in a number of different tissues, and what he found out is that the percent of adenine was always equal to the percent of the thymine. No matter what tissue he examined, he looked at the thymus of a cow, he looked at some well, a whole bunch of different animal tissues, a whole bunch of different plant tissues, it always came out the same. The percent of adenine was equal to the percent of thymine, and the percent of guanine was always equal to the percent of cytosine. Beyond that, he wasn't able to figure out the structure of DNA. That came later with, again, the, the photograph, the x-ray crystallography from Bronson Franklin and the work of, of Watson and Crick. But this was a significant development because it allows us to make a, a calculation here. For example, if I know that, let's just take uh, cytosine here. Oops, I just raised my smooth for cytosine. Okay, let's just take cytosine again. So if I take the cytosine, and let's say that I do the experiment that Shargaff did, and he comes up with a number of 18% cytosine. Well, what his research tells us is that we must have 18% guanine. Okay, it's got to be 18% guanine because for every guanine there's a cytosine and we can see that because they match up here, they go together here. Alright, so that tells us that we have a total of 36% made up of C bonded to G. Well, that means the rest of it must be A bonded to T. And the rest of it would be 100 minus 36, which would give us 64% would be A bonded to T. So if we want to figure out, well, how much is A and how much is T, we just divide that by 2. Divide that by 2, we get 32% would be adenine, and 32% would be thymine. It's just as simple as that, given the, the work that Erwin Chargaff did. So on an exam question, this is a pretty easy question to answer. Let's just take a look at one. All right, so this was from the diploma exam. Analysis of the DNA sample showed that 15% of the nitrogen-based molecules were adenine. So key there, 15%. Not sure about the wording here. Nitrogen-based molecules, what they mean are nucleotides. So A's, T's, C's, and G's, 15% of them were adenine. So the sample would likely contain, well, this is a really easy question. I'm going to work out all of them just to see how, how it's done. So again, 15% is adenine, which means that 15% is thymine, which adds up to 30%, which leaves 70%, sorry, 30% is A's and T's. So that means 70% is G's and C's, guanines and cytosines. So divide that by 2, that means 35% it's guanine, and 35% is cytosine. That's really all we have to do. Now, in this question, we have our, our answer. It's very easy here. 15% is thymine, or 15% is adenine. Uh, they give uracil, which is, of course, not found in DNA. That's found in RNA. 
85 percent thaw. I mean, that's kind of the distractor they're trying to get you to, to go for because of 15 percent that I mean, then add up to 100, 85 percent thaw. I mean, kind of logically makes sense. But remember, Chargaff said, adenine is equal to thymine, cytosine is equal to guanine. So that's not equal, it can't be that. And of course, once again, we have uracil here, can't be uracil. This is about as easy a question on the plumb exam as you're ever going to see. 